from a man of no education and have been doomed to slavery during life and was born in Powhatan County and was raised in Richmond, Virginia and am now a soldier in the U.S. Army. And I will speak these few words and answer to, whom, to all whom it may concern, wherever it may roam. I have left my wife and children, but though I have not yet forsaken them and made one grasp at the flag of the Union and declared it shall never fall. For we love it like the sunshine and the stars and azure air. Ho oh, for the flag of the Union, the stripes and stars of light. A million arms shall guard it and God defend the right. Aye, brothers, let us love it and let every heart be true and let every arm be ready for we have glorious work to do. Ho oh, for the flag of the Union, the stripes and the stars of light. A million arms shall guard it and may God defend the right. I hope we may meet again and the bonds of love to greet. Farewell. I hope history may tell. Hannibal Cox, Company B, 14th U.S. Colored Troops. <laughs> Bel Air, August 25th, 1864. Mr. President, it is my desire to be free, to go see my people on the Eastern Shore. My mistress won't let me. You will please let me know if we are free and what I can do. I write to you for advice. Please send me word this week or as soon as possible. I oblige. Annie Davis. Some 200,000 black men served in the Union Army, playing crucial roles from 1863 to 1865. Dr. Wright, what was the impact of black offers to volunteer during the Civil War, and how did Lincoln respond to those offers of support? So Lincoln calls for 75,000 men in April of 1861 and more than 93,000 white Americans answer that call. And many black Americans do as well. They send letters to Lincoln and to the federal government offering their services, and the federal government turns them down. From Lincoln's perspective, this is not a war over slavery, it's a war over union. This is a white man's war, it has nothing to do with African Americans. They know the war is about slavery, as do white Southerners all know the war is somehow about slavery. But from Lincoln's perspective, he's not going to allow them to fight. After the Emancipation Proclamation is issued in January of 1863, Lincoln finally welcomes black men into the army, and upwards of 200,000 serve. And Lincoln comes to see that they are an essential component of the war effort. They make up 10% of the Union Army, and he knows that the Union would not win without their service. But 1861 is a different time.